guys, how are you guys doing? Hello. Hey, Facebook. Let me just talk to you guys here for one second. Um, like, I feel like I've just won the lottery. Oh my God, like, I really, really feel like I have won the lottery. Like, seriously? So let me just invite some people over. This is so personal. This is so personal for me right now. Um, personal. It's like I fun. I feel like I've actually won the lottery. Um, I'm so excited. I I cry. It's that deep for me. Um, some of you. Um, who know me very well you'll understand why this is very deep for me hi heavily how are you honey hi mudar muda siru hi victoria um for those of you who know me very well um you'd know that africa has a lot of meaning for me um first of all growing up in jamaica i grew up around a lot of Bob Marley's music. I work with Sharon Marley, uh, for those of us who didn't know that. And I also um, listened to a lot of a guy called Garnet Silk. And Garnet Silk had a song that is it's so in my head more these days that said, hello, mama, Africa. Heavily, do you remember that song, honey? Like, help me up here, Heavily, please. Please help me. Let them don't think that I'm just making this song up, that this is really an actual song. Hi, Caroline. This is actually a Jamaican song. It was it's sung by a guy called Garnet Silk. Thank you. And it says, I'm feeling fine and I hope you're fine too. And every time I think of Africa, um, I think of Garnet Silk. And I've always wanted to go to Africa. Um, so when I married my then um, African husband, I was really excited. Hi, Janine. I was really excited about marrying him because I was um, thinking that he would take me to Africa. Of course, guys, you know what happened. We didn't make it. Uh, we're now divorced. And um, I'm emotional. He wasn't the one to take me to Africa. And in a lot of ways, um, that was hard for me because I always felt that that was it. When I met him, I felt I'd found my other half and the other part of who I was and, you know, that whole thing. Because I'm firmly believing that um, I believe I'm African. I, I'm not one of the Caribbean people who say, oh, I'm not from Africa. That's not me. I firmly hold on to my African roots. I believe I'm from Africa. I really, I'm into the whole African. I like the culture. I like the clothing. I like the food. Not so much the food now because I'm, I'm really into eating healthier. But um, when I was, you know, eating, just eating, um, I ate anything. The food was really a big thing for me. Um, and when I got asked to speak in Africa, um, I, I, before I even said yes, I cried. Um, I've always wanted to go to Africa. Um, for those of us who don't understand our history, um, I've always yearned to try and understand where I was from. Um, you know, the thing about Africans is they can tell you what village they're from. They can tell you the origin and i always feel like a caribbean person that whilst i love being caribbean i really would have loved to know was i from nigeria was i from ghana was i from sierra leone was i from you know Cote d'Ivoire? where was i from and i i'll never know that right and so a little part of me always feels that yearn and that pull and that tug towards africa because I am convinced and I know um, that I'm from there. So when I got asked to go and speak in South Africa, I cried before I could say yes. Hi, Veronica. I cried. And um, today I got asked again. 
Hi, Sansia. How are you doing, honey? Today I got asked to speak in Nigeria and I just see Africa opening up for me and I'm really blessed and happy and glad to God for those kind of blessings. So um, it's personal, it's deep, it's emotional. Um, growing up in Jamaica, nobody could have told me that this little girl would um, travel so extensively. Uh, in a few, next month I'm traveling to Europe, I get Eastern Europe, I'll be away for for about 12 days working and and just seeing you know how god's working in my life is is crazy but nobody could have told me growing up that i would be going to africa i'd be doing these kind of trips and i just found out tonight that i'm doing two keynote speeches in south africa and hi sandra and i'll be doing two panel discussions and for me I think the best part about going to Africa, apart from going to Africa for the first time, is that I get to do this with my children. I get to take my kids with me. And that for me is so invaluable. I get to take my kids to Africa with me. Hi Rose. Rose, this is what I'm asking you to do, honey, a vlog. Um, I get to take my kids to Africa with me. And for me, that is priceless. That is something that no matter how much money somebody was giving me, it couldn't, wouldn't do any difference. Um, I get to take my kids to Africa with me. Like, like that is Christmas and a half come true all at once. And so for me, my son who is, oh God, I'm gonna cry. My son who is half African, who doesn't know any of his African family. My son is half, half African and he doesn't know any of his family. And though we're not going to Nigeria where his dad's from, just touching the African soil with my son It's gonna mean so much because at the moment is the closest he will get to knowing kind of like where he's from or part of him is from. So he's been to Jamaica. But this is the closest he'll get to Africa at the moment for us. And so for me, it's emotional. It's the closest I can show my, my son that Africa is, is his father's soil that that this is where he came from. I'm sorry. So, um, I'm glad that I get to speak and, and through my speaking, it takes me to Africa. because I've yearned to go to Africa for a long time. And I'm just glad I get to go. I have a child who is half African. 
you know, sometimes people see and people don't understand that I have my own battles. So like my son doesn't know anybody. He doesn't know anybody, anybody from his father's side. He knows nobody. So when his school denied him, when I, when I, when I, when I, I told the school that I'm going to Africa and I really want to take my son with me and they told me no, it was not even, it's not even up for discussion because it's the closest he will ever get to seeing where his father is from. So it's not up for the day. I'm taking him. I mean, okay. okay. I'm taking him because I've got no choice. But even if I had a choice, it's one of the things that I just can't not take him to. I have to take him to Africa. He has to see it. So Africa is emotional for me. Um, and I'll be going to Nigeria next year as well. So I can't take my son then. But I'm going to Nigeria just before I go to Purpose Walk. I think, fingers crossed, it's not confirmed yet, but I think I'll be off mm -hmm. to, to Nigeria twice next year. Um, so Africa is emotional for me. I'm sorry. Um, I just had to get that out. I'm excited. I'm really excited about going to Africa. I, I'm so excited about going to Africa. You guys don't understand. Um, as a child growing up in Jamaica, Africa was one of those places that I grew up understanding. It was part of who I am. I grew up, my, 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 my upbringing, in my upbringing, there was always this Africa thing in the background of my life. So I've always known I had an African roots and African origin. I've never, Africa is calling. Um, I've never been the kind of Jamaican who say, oh, no, 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 no. I've always, if you look around my house, um, for those of us who know me, I have a lot of African symbolism in my house. Um, I've got women, and I mean, if you can look up there, you probably can see that. Can you see that? I'm very, very, um, can you see her? Yeah, so I'm very, and if you look again, let me just show you her, because you probably have seen her anyway. So those of you, you probably have seen her, so I'm very, um, Africa is a big part of my life in my house. Um, I'm very, very big on Africa. I've got a lot of African thing going on in my house. Um, lots of strong characters, uh, mainly female, African females, um, and African symbolism in my house. I've got lots of carvings and stuff, and I've always had that Africa connection. So I can't wait to touch the soil, the green, green grass of home. Um, I can't wait to get to Africa. I can't wait. My heart is so full. My heart is so full. Um, I might not come back. You know, you never know. I might go to Africa and not come back. I, it's possible. So, oh, I'm gonna, I'm so excited. Like, I can't wait. Um, it's an 11 and a half hours flight. It's a long flight. Um, only a few weeks now before I go. It's not long, not long, not long, um, not long. And oh, Laura, I'm going to Africa, baby. I'm so excited. Like, ah, I'm so excited. You didn't want to say that. What did you want to, you didn't want to say, yeah, you didn't want to say what? Africa country would be the proud to have you. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so glad they're going to have me. I'm so excited. That they'll have me. Please come back, you may. <laughs> oh, Rose, you're gonna have to come and visit me out there, baby. Um, who knows? What if I went to Africa and found a husband who really loves me and wants to stay? You never know. What if I go to Africa and get offered a? What if? You know, everything is possible. I'm really open for possibilities. You might come back. <laughs> That I might not come back. It is possible, you know. Um, but one of the other things that I'm loving about um, going to Africa is that um, my son wants to work with animals when he gets older. And so 
I can't even go to it right now. But on our fridge, there's lots of tigers and zebras and he draws all these animals and he's so into animals. So we're gonna be on a safari, like to see animals in their real habitat. Like that is so freaking priceless right there. You never know, Sandra. That is so priceless. And um, I'm sure they'll accept my hair, right? I'm sorry. I'm having a sniffle. After my tears, I'm, I'm all bummed up. So sorry to see you. Please see me wiping my nose. Um, but I'm real, you know me. I'm, see, I match Africa. I'm so real. I can just be myself. Um, they'll accept my hair, right? They'll accept my locks in South Africa. I'm sure. I'm not so sure about West Africa, but in South Africa, I'm listening to this guy called Lucky. Oh, you guys have to listen to him. He's South African. And he sounds like, oops, don't play, don't play, ooh, don't play. He sounds like um, Peter Tosh. His music is priceless. So I've been listening to him a lot um, this weekend. Let us, let us in the hidden agenda. <laughs> what hidden agenda? I'm speaking in Africa, Veronica. I haven't got a hidden agenda. I've been invited to speak in Cape Town. Um, so I'm going to go to South Africa and then, um, I'm going to be, hopefully be off to, um, why is it so significant? What are you asking about? Um, Vic, let me understand what's the question about. I'll certainly try to answer why is going to Africa so significant? Is that the question? Let me know, um, if that's what you're asking and I'll surely tell you why it is, um, so significant for me um look at yeah he's amazing oh lara his music is so freaking amazing he reminds me of um peter tosh um in a lot of ways and um okay one second there one second there. You can tell who I'm texting, right? <laughs> Shush. Uh, what have I missed about Africa? Girl, I'm going to Africa. Um, what have you missed? Uh, you've missed that I'm going to Africa. And, oh, sorry. I spoke about my son being African, half African. And I. this is the closest I'll get to show him. Ooh, I don't like to see my big nose like that. This is the closest I'll get to show him his father's land, where he, where his dad came from, part of who he is. Um, the trip, the trip is big for me, Vic, in two ways. I've always wanted to go to Africa. I was married to an African guy, and I always believed that he was the one who was going to take me to Africa, but it never happened. Um, oh, I, I, no, Sandra, I see Rita Mali outside of here. So um, some of you might know that I worked for. I'm sorry. I was crying, so I'm having a sniffle. I worked for Sharon Marley, um, so I I get to do Rita behind the scenes. I'm very good friends with Natty Whaler. You guys probably see me on Facebook with him. I'm in touch with the Marleys for some other things, Mango Girl, so we can't discuss that here. Um, but back to Vic's question, Victoria question. Africa is big for me because I've always wanted to go. Africa is big for me because I believe that I'm African. Um, I know I'm African. Africa is big for me because I was married to an African guy. And when we got married, I felt that he was going to be the person who was going to um, take me to Africa. Africa is big for me because in my struggles as a person, so I don't know how much you know about me, Victoria, but in my struggles, um, I used to sometimes remember the African people and if you know um, Kunta Kente, that whole movie, and that struggle and the hardship and our resilience and our tenacity. So although I've never been to Africa, I sometimes would go back to the things I've read in my history books and the things I've learned and watched about African people and our resilience. And I used to remember people like Nani de Maroon. Who knows Nani de Maroon? Anybody knows Nani de Maroon? And I used to believe that I'm from the Maroon, so the Maroons are Africans. And so it's a, it's a, it's a very mixed bag for me. It's a lot of emotions. It's, it's personal. It's very, very personal, Vicky. 
um, Victoria. So that's my answer. So guys, that's me done. Um, watch out for my, my, my lives. I'm going to, I've been invited to go to Nigeria next and I'm excited about that. And, um, I'm excited. So, um, you know, and part of this for me is that, you know, I've always said I'm going to speak on all the continents. I've got one continent left after Africa. Just one. Yes. Got one continent left and that's Asia. And then I would have spoken on all the continents. And that really makes me excited because from the little girl who grew up in Jamaica who couldn't even speak English, um, the little girl who failed English in, in school and, and math in school and was homeless. And that little girl, to be doing all these crazy trips, I'm flying out on the 22nd of October, I think, to Eastern Europe. I'm working with the University of Tehran. Uh, you know, I, I just get so excited about these things because these are the things that dreams are made of. and. And these things are not meant to happen to somebody like me. And if, if you can take anything away from this conversation, apart from my snot in my tissue and my tears and my emotional state of being about Africa, I want you to take from it that you can become anything you want to be, that your business can thrive, that you can thrive, whether you're a single mother, single father, whether you're married, divorced, whether you've been sick, it doesn't matter. You can pick yourself up and you can plan your dreams. And so, if I can leave you with one thing, I want to leave you with this. Be very open to the world. Be open to travel. Be open to new opportunities. And Sandra, I want to talk to you because I want to take a purpose walk to some countries. Um, just Jazine, I want to talk to you as well. Um, I'm taking purpose walk to Paris, I think. I'm taking it to Croatia. Somebody wants to take it to Ireland. And I'm happy to roll out purpose walk in various countries, various cities with various partners. So if you want to roll up purpose walk with me next year, let's have a conversation. So I'm done talking about Africa. Mama Africa, I'm coming. Ooh. Hello, Mama Africa. How are you? I'm feeling blessed and I hope you're blessed too. I can't wait. So guys, thank you for joining me. If you're not following me in my Facebook group, come over and join me. It's Awaken Your Book, Life and Business. That's where we are. I'm teaching in there tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. UK time, 8. Can't even get my 8 right. That's one. So have a good night. I'm done here on Facebook. I've got a date, so I'm going to go and get ready. See you later. And he's texting and I'm late. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.